all the cops on me. On a mission to be champs since they let me free. Prepare for combat, my adversaries crumble. Face it, I got a reputation for damage. Busters get ready to rumble. They lock me in a cell. Have me trapped in a living hell. Though not guilty, I'm still in jail. Brother, I serve my time like a soldier. Maintain composure. My shadow box in the fight to the death. Busting boulders. Every boxer with a pair of gloves. Best give up love. Here's a man from the makings of a thug. A lethal weapon, my sharp. And in my heart, there's a wish to shake the bread with the flurry of my black fist. Now, once a high school dropout. Shoot up a couple kids. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Another episode of Chief Seats Box Show. Angel, him, boy, JP. JP, what's up, man? Man, life is great and it sucks, man. Yeah. Jealous all, of kids. All at the same time. Um, follow the show on Twitter, please. No. At Chief Seats Box. iTunes, rate, review. You could be the next unofficial sponsor. You guys have been slacking, man. Pathetic. Pathetic, man. Oh, disappointed in our listeners, JP. I don't know what else to say about it's it, man. It's summertime. They chasing that thing. <laughs> um, email the show, cheapseatsboxing at gmail.com. Questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, we will get back to you on that. Oh, you know what? It worked out pretty good last week. We, we got a little momentum. So I'll ask again. You follow us on Twitter. If you follow us on Twitter, when I post the link out for the iTunes or YouTube link, Retweet it, please. A lot of you guys did it. Appreciate it. Uh, so I know it got to a lot more new listeners than uh, than it usually does. Um, you know, like, if everybody starts retweeting and you get five, ten more people who never heard it, you know, that's you know, it adds up. Uh, so please keep on doing that. Uh, last week, JP, a couple of things. We talked about uh, Regis Progray, Joel Diaz Jr., uh, the Rougarou, uh, yeah, he was a monster in there. <laughs> uh, beat the fuck out of Joel Diaz in two rounds. Uh, knocked him out and put a stamp on him that he is now no longer a contender, uh, no longer a uh, a prospect, but now a contender at 140. What, what do you think, man, about Pro Gray? He's not a prospect. Nope. He's not a contender. He's a problem. <laughs> That's what, he's going to be a problem. Just... How often, how how rare is it to see somebody with the aggression to come get you and get you out of there at this day and time? Mm-hmm. Then, most people not ready for that. But as soon as the bell rings, I'm going to figure out a way to kick, to, to, to beat you to death in here. You know, people are just trying to point people to get people out. He's actually trying to get rid of you. In a, in aggressive, kind of tactical, kind of, you know, touch you up real hard. See what you're working with. Walk you down. Beat you up. Now that you're just demoralized and beat up, get you out of here. Yeah. Like, man, he's going to be exciting. Yeah, he is exciting. Um, hey, a new face at 140. You know, maybe that maybe it isn't dead for Crawford. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, he, hey, I'm hey. not saying he's there yet, but what I'm saying oh. is, what I'm saying is that, you know, like, it was almost like, once he fights in Dongo, gets all the belts or whatever the IBF feels about it. You know what else is there at 140? You know, maybe a Mikey Garcia if he if he make if they make that fight. But Progray is a guy who is could be trouble. I mean, if he's that aggressive, and if there's one thing that Crawford has shown a little bit of vulnerability to, it is aggression. When when yeah. when. Um, who was it? Why, why can't think? I know it was um, Gamboa, but the the, the fight after, after that, that, when he lost the, the, the first few rounds, the, 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 Delorme, the, the, Thomas uh, Delorme. So when people are aggressive with him, it takes him a while, and if he can't get you out, you know, that that's an issue. And if you got the power, and it, and Progre has the power. I mean, if 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 a guy like Gamboa can can stun you, at least you know what I mean, like he did do. Uh, against Crawford, you know, Progray could be a, a problem, man. That's a, that's a fun matchup. Uh, so hopefully he can get it, you know, maybe if the IBF strips in Dongo, which would be bullshit, maybe he can get his hands on that or somehow. Um, and then on Sunday, the return of Brandon Bam Bam Rios gets the seventh round stoppage over Aaron Herrera. Um, I'll, the thing that I like that 
I was hoping not to see uh, that, that I was hoping to see was that he still let his hands go. He didn't seem like he was gun shy. He didn't seem like he was a guy who was going to be sitting there waiting on shots. He let his hands go. Uh, he got hit like he always does. That's what Brandon Rios does. At this point, like we said last week, he's going to be in fun fights, not necessarily meaningful fights, but there are some very fun, good, entertaining fights out there at 147, like Provodnikov or even an Adrian Broner, even a Sean Porter. Uh, there, there are th- fights out there for him because um, I don't think he has that many left. I mean, he's already starting to get a little bit of the early signs of James Tony syndrome, uh, which is not a good thing. Uh, oh, man. He's a little punchy, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'll, if he's going to do it, I'd rather him do it in a 3-4 fight grouping rather than stretching it out over five years, you know what I mean? Let, get it out in two years. Um, the damage is going to be done, unfortunately. Um, but what kind of savages are we? Well, we still want to see him. <laughs> we like Bam Bam, man. We like the style. We like, we just like how he get down. But, you know, oh, man. You know, a lot of people don't even know this because it never aired. He was one of, yeah. we, before his fight with, uh, with Bradley, we were like one of the last, uh, interviews on the podcast that he did. He just never got to see the light of day because there was so much bra- background noise. Uh, yeah, bl- yeah. Blame the kid here. <laughs> I went to a football game. It got the times all messed up, and all you can hear is. <sighs> so yeah, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> but um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what's next for for Rios. Hopefully, he gets in right away. You know, g- another three months, he's back in the ring. That's what I want to see, because. The thing that always hurts Rios is time away because he gets disinterested. He likes to eat bad. Um, so, you know, I would like to see him in about see where he's at because if he if he becomes active, because he spent a lot of time getting himself in shape. You know, a lot of you know, and some of that was the bullshit with Ortiz backing out and all that. But he spent a lot of time getting himself in shape. He's two three fights in. He might look a whole lot better. Not saying he looks super bad, but he might no. actually look better than he looks looks Sunday. You know, th- that's the interesting part because it seems like he's focused in that way. You know, you got to give credit to his wife because I remember he was the one that said his wife told him, get your ass back to work. <laughs> so he's been getting back to work. Got to give him credit for that. Um, Before we get to the only car we're going to talk about, I wanted to make one one comment and this was about and we didn't hit this last week and i wanted to but this is what happens every time we do a show and we don't i don't write down everything uh <laughs> is not you know you'll you'll get done with recording and you'll be like god damn it i forgot to hit this part uh, of the show but the fact that canelo triple g was announced for t-mobile in las vegas um after his letter to whoever about the boxer versus MMA uh, fight, uh, you know, uh, you know, the plea for, you know, he did it with Mayweather uh, when he was retiring and uh, talking about the fans and the fans this and the fans that. Um, why don't you follow your own fucking advice, Oscar, and do something for the fans? Um, see, a fight like Triple G, Canelo, this can, this can really create new fans because anything in any sport is stories from fans right and it's not necessarily you know oh i remember watching this fight or i remember you know seeing the replay of this fight but when you actually went to the fights and you could pass those stories down to your kids to family members um but by not putting this in Vegas for whatever reason and honestly the money wasn't going to be much different it was really going to be for future events that you're going to get T-Mobile for and that's basically all it was for it was for your own self-interest you you basically are going from 20,000 tickets where there are only going to be a couple thousand that the actual fans get to 100,000 in AT&T in Dallas where 80,000 fans were going to be able to get purchased and unlike most other big stadiums like that you know how they say well you can't see anything anyway you'll be looking at the monitors you know that's true but it's like going to a closed circuit viewing of a fight 
in AT&T, they have the biggest jumbotrons in the world. So, yeah, you may be high up, but you're going to be there. You're going to get the feel of the fight and actually get a, at least a good view. I don't give a shit if it's on a monitor. Trust me, when the story gets passed down, you're going to be able to see the fight perfectly. And what you did was you eliminated 80,000 stories from fans about how they were there for Canelo and Triple G. You just... You just took 80,000 people out of there, no stories, and maybe that each person gets one person extra to start watching the fight, the fights, and that's 80,000 new fans you lost right there, minimum. Because they changed so many names, which one is T-Mobile now? No, that's the, that's the new one. That's the new one they built for MGM. Okay. That, that was the one. Remember they were okay. that... Um, that they you know the they, new one they broke ground for yeah that they broke ground for and everybody thought you know Floyd was going to open it and, and actually right. it's been what two Canelo fights uh, the Ward and Kovalev fight and so I mean that's pretty much what we've seen so far I don't know I mean when it comes to stuff like that honestly I mean he 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 we all do hypocritical stuff he just does hypocritical stuff on a mass scale and the thing about it is like you know i remember a long time ago um it was actually floyd talking about it he was like it was he was on he was with oscar and sugar ray leonard on a plane and they were telling him to be more appealing by being like nicer on camera and he was like y'all fake this is who you no, I'm going to be who the fuck I am. You need to be who you are. I get it makes more money this way. But him being the heel, I, just do, look, if you're going to say something, stand on it. You know, don't say something one day when it's, and then when it's convenient for you, do the exact same thing you railed against or the exact type of things you railed against. That don't, and, and, and the, because I don't think, Honestly, I don't think people actually have a problem with Oscar De La Hoya as a person with, with all of his outside incidents. But I think they, they have more so a problem with the fact that why do you keep trying to play the nice guy when you're doing this stuff? Like, we can accept you flawed. You know, you can't keep getting up. You didn't got up 25,000 times already from flaws. We understand it. But stop playing a nice guy one minute and a bad guy the next. It just doesn't come off well. You know, as far as the fans go, man, honestly, you got the biggest star in boxing. You got the biggest star in boxing. If you're, going, if you're trying to use them for mass output, okay. But the question is, how long is your run going to last? Because sometimes I don't know if he's I don't I don't know if he's propping Canelo out or burning him out. I really don't know. Because he's put he's putting him in there tough, but sometimes not tough enough. He's he's able because a lot of these games come from Oscar. The weight games, the title games, the competition games, the way we look at the beginning of the fights, but then when the fights happen, we gotta look at the fight again like just something don't sit well about this. Utilize that dude, man. When you hear Canelo say, I have the heart to do these things, I'm going to do these things, hold that man to that. Because ultimately, you make him look as a worse person when he's kind of the biggest star in boxing, but he's wasting his prime. And, you know, and that sucks for him and the fans. I mean, K KD reference. He won the championship, but I don't know if everybody's going to respect it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I want a great fight, though. I mean, just the, all of the shenanigans on the outside fuck everything up. Yeah, and this this has nothing to do with the fight, what I think of yeah. the fight. It's just, and, and honestly, I wouldn't even, who would even care if it was at T-Mobile? But when you come out and you do those stupid-ass letters to, you know, to, to the boxer versus MMA fight and shit like that, you're talking about the fans, the fans, the fans. It ain't about the fans, motherfucker. It's about you. You're selfish, and that's okay. But don't play like you're not. Yeah. If there's one thing I hate is, is fucking fake shit and hypocritical shit. St stick by your guns. 
Um, speaking of hypocritical stuff, the only fight to talk about, the only card to talk about this week, Kovalev War. There's two hypocrites. Um, you, this is well, going, no, it's three. It's three. It's me. Oh no 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 same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the the the. the I'm going to be honest. I think this is going to be one of the most fair breakdowns of any out there on on any of the shows. Um, I'm going to separate the two the two fighters and then the fight from the fight itself. You know, uh, it's pretty simple. One is a racist asshole who made excuses, and the other one is a condescending narcissistic asshole who made excuses um, but we don't hear about that stuff and uh, that's just you can you, you I mean we, we know who's who by that but they're both in the same boat they're both hypocrites they're both narcissists they're both assholes uh, you could they're both excuse makers you know, um, like, okay, like this, everybody's talking about Kovalev making too many excuses, too many excuses. Don't, let's not forget, Ward also made the excuses. Oh, I couldn't do any, you know, the reason I couldn't jump on him more than I did in the second half was because I didn't do any road work because of my knee. So we, they all made excuses. But, you know, for whatever reason, all of a sudden now the Ward excuses have been forgotten about. Um, let's put it like this, the bitch what do you say? The bitch assness sometimes? Got it from Diddy. Okay. <laughs> How about this? Ward's team calls John David Jackson, right? Offers to jump ship, right? And then they leak it out there that he he considered coming over. He wanted to come over to our side, right? Even Even if it was true. Even if it was true. The fact that you put out personal business out on the on Twitter and shit like that—that's bitch shit. That that that's screen that that that's some chick screenshotting text from you and her and then wanting to call you out on your shit. No, that's bitch shit, and that's what that's what Team Ward did. You know, Kovlev has had his incidents with the the, the racist, sex, uh, uh, homophobic undertones of his retweets and his tweets that he's copied and pasted on his. They they these guys. Honestly, there is no good guy in this fight. There's just two bad guys in this fight. That's just the truth. No, well, maybe they're good bad guys. Then. How about that? They're good bad guys. Uh, his, man, see, I remember when I talked about Kovalev when he was trying to get uh, Adonis Stevenson. He was talking that shit. Yeah. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. If you can get him to fight, you know, that's what fighters do. Talk enough shit to get in somebody's head to make him fight. Adonis wasn't, you know, that's not his character, obviously. Now, I, what I didn't know, or either I forgot about, was the Lennox Lewis part. That's when I was like, what the fuck? Which, which part? Well, <clears throat> well, uh, Lennox came at him and he started sending him the monkey things. Yeah. Oh, so I, I that kind of, it's like, wait a minute, he did what? See, Stevenson, one thing, you trying to fight him. What? You trying to fight him. Is it out of bounds? Yeah, to a degree, yeah. But when when I say when it's fighting, you gotta back that shit up. So I look the fighter could shut you up. That's his job. But Lennox Lewis had nothing, you know, you talking to him like that and as if you don't have to fight him. That's just how you talking. But at the same time, out of all the three people I just named, you would talk that shit to Lennox Lewis. Oh, well, if if I'm not mistaken, Lennox actually called him out on his on that text. The one, you know, where it was Ward texting him. You know that, that tweet, okay. Ward text. He, he had said that there's no place in boxing for stuff like that. And that's when I, a lot of people go, hmm, Lennox, I could remember you calling Haseem Rockman an Uncle Tom. Ah, <laughs> I do remember this conversation now. <laughs> he did do that. Well, that's three different people, though. <laughs> he did do that, but it's three different people. Yep. Now it's like... Bro, that's what you're doing. Now, here's my thing. On one end, here's the thing with Kovalev now. I have no problems 
I was born in the South. Raised partially in the South, East Coast, Midwest. Dealt with a lot of racist shit. Have, have have no problems with a person that's racist because I know for a fact when I say back that shit up nine times out of ten they're gonna try to call the police that's just how they get down they don't they're not gonna back the shit they talk up now Kovalev you need to understand something I guess John David Jackson didn't tell you certain people you shouldn't try that shit with Ward is not a person you try that shit with because of his upbringing and where he's from and how he operates. It's not going to piss him off in a way that he's like, mm, using my head. No, it's going to piss him off and like, oh, I'm going to try to embarrass this bastard for this. Because if I do this, he's just going to get frustrated because he's getting beaten by the new. I could just say it the whole fight while I'm kicking your ass and you're just going to lose it. But that's how it goes. Now, whatever happened to you, I don't give a fuck. That's just how it is. Still think you're a great fighter, but I don't give a fuck. Ward, here's my, here's my thing with, with wars. To take the high road so many times in your career. Don't get, why I get in the battle of petty now? I mean, I know people get tired of it. I get that. I get it. People get tired of the shit. I get it. You be like, look, I'm going to bounce back. But, Frotch was a bully. You know how you handle Frotch? Man, I ain't hearing that shit. I'm, I'm going to do what I do. You do what you do. Whatever. You know? Bad Chad, Bad Chad didn't want to talk that much to, to Ward. So cause I guess he knew the demeanor. You get what I'm saying? But other people, Sullivan, Sullivan Burrell called Ward out. He talked a little bit, but not so much. Kovalev, just do the shit you've been doing. Now, when it comes down to the to to to, to the to the issue at hand, for me as a fan and as a person, and how I get down as a human being. Here's my issue with both of you guys. Y'all not talking like y'all hyping up the fight. Y'all talking like y'all forgot that y'all signed to fight again. Like, God damn it. You know, it's like somebody saying, I'm going to fight you on Friday. Now, Monday, see the last time we got into a fight. You know, fuck, I twisted my ankle on the stairs. But see, fuck that. I promise you, the last time we fighting on Friday, what are you bitching about? We fighting on Friday. You know, the coldest words I ever saw ever was was Anderson Silva. That's how you should treat this shit. Like Anderson Silva in a pink polo shirt. I think he was talking to Chael Shonen. He, he's like, what you gonna do now? He's like, hey, bro, we, we already signed the fight. Don't worry, I'm gonna be there. You gonna be there. Cold love, I don't give a shit how long you overtrained. You gonna be there. What? I don't care if your knee is hurt. You gonna be there. Because y'all trash talking don't necessarily work. War was never really a trash talker. Kovalev, you know, can't really, doesn't really talk. He, he can't keep up the trash talk. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know Russian. So, shit, just show the fuck up. Isn't it a bad thing that your top three fighters <clears throat> in the light heavyweight division, one is a narcissistic, narcissistic asshole, one is a racist asshole, and the other one's a woman beating, imprisonment, fucking piece of shit, <laughs> asshole. Well, well, well technically, <laughs> I mean, uh, no, I was, about to, I was about to say, I was about to say something cold. I was like, he could still play for the Giants, but he ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't white. So, yeah, but I don't. He's not in the mix, man. Badu Jack is over him. Sullivan Barrera is over him. Uh, Joe, Joe Smith. Joe Smith. So everybody else is over him. I'm a, I'm a Joe Smith fan. Actually, I really am. That motherfucker took the WBC belt to the fucking construction site. <laughs> I'm a fan. Just because hey, of hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. I know what you did. You, you took the picture and you put that shit back in the car. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because <laughs> you know how your car is going to get down. Oh, yeah. But it's like any other place. You can't leave shit in the break room. That shit will be gone. <laughs> hey, so you all seen the fucking WBC belt around here? I left it on... I left over here on the table in the break room. Joe, we don't know where I, that belt nah, went. I ain't seen nothing, man. Yeah. Uh, Who ate my lunch, too? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know. Was it, did you have like a sandwich and a, a bag of chips and a banana and a Coke? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now down to the fight. First fight, I had it pretty comfortable for Kovalev. Actually, to me, it played out pretty much how I said it would. 
I for me I picked it uh I actually picked it 116 112 because of the knockout I actually scored at 116 111 um there were probably four I'd say this there were four clean Kovalev rounds four clean Ward rounds and I think there was four toss up rounds I think that's that's pretty fair uh actually it's probably it's probably more in the line of 3-3 and then a whole bunch of, <laughs> of close rounds. Uh, but if you just, you know, if you split it up and say you just were even, like, I gave the benefit of the doubt in these couple rounds to Kovalev and these to Ward, even at the worst, to me, it was like, at the worst, I could see 6-6, six to six, which would still give Kovalev the fight. So many people who had Ward winning... Seven, the last seven rounds, I, I can't comprehend it. I, it just was... You can't say it was a close fight. This, this, this is why... This is why the comments... Those, those kind of... Like, the last seven rounds... If you had them sweeping seven, you say, but it was a close fight. Seven sweeping rounds doesn't correlate to a close fight. It actually says that one person was pretty dominant <laughs> through the fight. Um, it's like... It, it was... And I think a lot of people say this. It was a tale of two fights. One first half, it was definitely Kovalev. Uh, the second half, people say it was definitely Ward. I actually had it three rounds to three the last um, the last uh, six rounds. Um, I, but, I, but I said it, it actually was more of a Ward-style fight the last half of the fight. Uh, so I get why people say he actually took control of the second half. Um, I just thought that the... That the the spread was too, too far at that point. Um, adjustment wise, there's, you know, everybody kind of makes it seem like only Ward can make the adjustment. There's a lot of, there's a, since this is such a, 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 a for whatever reason, this fight, and I'm glad it'll be over. It's such a race driven fight. It seems like on Twitter and shit like that. And on some of the shows, it's just like, it's almost like because Ward is the the black fighter, the and it, it's funny because in sports it's different, right? In, in different sports it's different. You know, in, in football the white guy is considered the more intelligent. You know, when right. the, the attributes and in boxing the black guy is always considered the more intelligent IQ of uh, the, for the sport. Um, and so, like for whatever reason, Kovalev can't make adjustments either. You know, is this? I, I don't. That's, People don't see the, that other side of it. That's why I said a long time ago, <laughs> the minute somebody is not from the United States, it they have certain little nuances and changes. You know, if Kovalev's from here, he'll be intelligent. If he's from Russia, he's not intelligent. You get what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Like, you know, if, if he was from London, he would probably be looked at as intelligent. Yeah, he probably would be. You know, but because don't th think about it. Even though it's probably a bad example to use, Provodnikov was probably the first real Russian to kick it off. They don't look at him as an as, as an intellectual person. Now, when you got um, Golovkin, um, Uzik was uh, Glo what is it? Glo not Glovaki, but Glowski. No. Glo yeah, hold on. Not the other one. U Alexander Uzik, Uzik, but it's the Glo. Glutic, oh, 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 None of those fight, none of those fighters are technically considered smart fighters. That's, I mean, it, you know, it's true, uh, but it's just weird. Like you have to be like, like uh, you have to be really, really amazingly skilled. As a lighter skinned fighter to be considered like intelligent in the ring, you have to be like a Lomachenko, where they right. say, man, his boxing IQ, but it's only because he's head and shoulders above everybody else. Where a lot of them, and it goes for Mexican fighters too. Right? Most of the Mexican fighters are considered brawlers. You know, the the the, the Juan Manuel Marquez's are few and far between. Like you know where they want to actually say he's a, a, a that tough mexican fighter where it's like no he's actually more of the he's intelligent smart. smart mexican fighter uh we it's so easy to, to to group people into boxes like because 
Ward's black. He's considered the more slick fighter, which honestly, I don't find him to be a slick fighter. I've said this in the past. I tend to see him more of substance over style. Like, I don't see him as stylistically... Um, like, he's not making the kind of moves in the ring that I would attribute to a Mayweather or even like a James Tony on the inside. The, the, the intelligent in, in fighting and, and movement of the head and defense, where a lot of his defense really is taking his one shot and coming in and causing a tie-up and then actually hitting you. Here's where his IQ comes in, is hitting you on off the break and coming out of the, the tie-up. He has a lot of... His, his his ring IQ is second to none, but I wouldn't necessarily. I don't when I watch yeah, when I watch him. I don't think of him as a slickster. I I just don't. Because you know, nobody says that. I, I, here's another. I was going to put it the comparison to nobody says Hopkins is a slick fighter. And remember when him and Hopkins they were talking about maybe those two fighting? What right. did everybody say? He's just a younger, better version of Hopkins. And then that's kind of how I see him. Very intelligent. Tactical with his dirtiness, and he's like, he's very, he's more style over substance, yeah. or substance over style. When I think about it, as you said, I, I started thinking about something else too. It's cyclical, because now it's the era to call boxers smart. Yeah, you know, I think Roy Jones era it was athletic. Yeah, um, Tyson it was more. Brutality. <laughs> right, right. It, but, you know, same thing with, because um, his era came, like, near the back end of, um, or in the midst of the the, 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 the four greats, which, if, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, Leonard, Hearns, Duran, Hagler. You get what I'm saying? It, it, we do, it's, it's, as soon as we go, even the fighters that are athletic now, they looked at it smart because they're so athletic. Mm -hmm. They're technical. Yeah. You know, the fighters that are, um, that um, are, are, are just vicious. They looked at it as like like even Tank could be considered a smart fighter right now because everybody's oh he was unorthodox and he thought that that freestyling out type mm -hmm. of thing. It's like mm, not necessarily, but it's just an error because because as soon as there, there comes a fighter that comes along and is completely opposite of this error. I guarantee you, all of the, the 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 stuff will change. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's funny because everybody wants to put every group into a box. Like you know what we were saying, the black fighters this, the white fighters this, the Mexican fighters that, and nobody ever. A lot of people are really lazy with it. Like you say, they mistake athleticism and then they'll call it slick or. Uh, intelligence like well sometimes like Roy Jones was just that much more athletic than everybody he, you know <laughs> he wasn't slick he just was so fast that you couldn't get him and you couldn't stop his punches but he was so technically flawed that the athleticism let him get away with it <laughs> that's what I, you know that's what I was trying to get at. We ain't, we're gonna get on topic folks no, 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 no. we got time because it's all we're gonna talk about when Years ago, we had talked about it. I said, you know, with, I, with, with my community, we don't have a set style. You can't think of a, a black American style of boxing because there's so many fighters that are so many, so completely different that nobody just. The fact that people are talking about the Mayweather style is kind of people on the, people in my people in, on the inside like Mayweather style. What the fuck are y'all talking about? He, that's him. It's a million other people out there that's doing something completely different. But whatever. But that's um, that's every but, race, right? Every race, man. But the thing about a person like Roy, they'll consider Roy smart because being unorthodox. Some people mm -hmm. do things that work for them personally. Them and them only. <laughs> right. That's why if if you try to emulate what Roy does, you will get your ass knocked out. Because he said before he took his fighting style from 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 animals. He's like I. I Cause he likes cock fighting. He likes dog fights. Mm -hmm. He likes, you know, he wa he watches like animal fights. He's like, I learned that's how he took his striking part of it. Um, so that's why his shit just is completely off of the grid <laughs> of what everybody else did. You know, people forget Tyson. Cust gave him a throwback ass style that wasn't. Nobody was doing that. No matter of fact, nobody is doing that. You know, 
when people get accustomed to certain things, matter now everybody's like, oh, this is this and this is that. Just because you've seen it before doesn't mean it's exactly the same. No. You know, anybody was every, I hear people all the time when I watch football say, oh, that guy moves like Barry Sanders. Have you lost your fucking mind? No, he doesn't. He will never be able to move like Barry Sanders. The only person that can move like Barry Sanders is God. <laughs> That's it. Like, it, when you see these fighters and, and some of their punches, no, you were talking about Mexican fighters. They say the Chavez style. Nobody can punch like Chavez to the body. Nobody. And you could try. You could emulate. The shit ain't going to never be like that. And I think what people don't realize is we'll go with a guy like Chavez, right? The reason he could dig to your body was because when you punched him, it didn't fucking matter. You know, like, because a lot of people, a lot of people won't even go to the body because they're not willing to take what's going to come back because they're going to get hit. When you go to the body, that, that's an investment. People aren't willing to invest in shit. Um, you know, people think of that brawling Mexican style. You hear brawling Mexican style a lot of times. Um, but there are fighters who will fight intelligently, who are counter punchers, like a Ricardo Lopez or a, or a Marquez. And even a guy like a Canelo is, I think, even a more slick <laughs> boxer style than even an Andre Ward where he's using a lot of of of, of movement at the waist uh to 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 use as defense where he's not using the tie up as a as a form of defense. Um where he's he's waiting for counter punch opportunities and stuff like that. He's more of that guy than even an Andre Ward is, but those two will those two will get crossed and how people will talk about them only based on their uh, on their ethnicity. That's it. Um you know what? From now on, only only Mexican fighters can fight. Mexican fighters, only white fighters can white, fight white fighters. We don't have to hear this shit. Because that, that has been the undertone of this this whole fucking fight. But that's boxing. <laughs> that, that is boxing. That, is ne- that has always been yeah. boxing. Boxing has always been a race war. That's all. It, every time you get a fighter, if it's, it, it doesn't matter if they're in the same race. It doesn't matter. If, it's more, but, it, but, it, but it plays out more with diff- opposing races. Is that because uh, yeah. because if you from the, if you from the same race and you black, eh, this, you hood but you ain't hood enough. This I said, one's more black. Right, right. <laughs> if, if if it's two Mexicans, uh-huh. he's a real Mexican. Yep. He's not yep. a real Mexican. Yep. So it's like, eh. I can, I'll give you two great two prime examples. We'll go the uh, the black guys, Ali Frazier, and then let's go the Mexicans. We'll go uh, uh, Morales Barrera because those two. No, he's not real Mexican. He's he's from you know. I was like, oh my god, yeah, it's so true. It's so true. It's like when they don't have when they don't have the others to to fight, they'll fight with each other. Man, it's it's such a uh, crazy mentality. I, and the bad part about it, it plays out. It's always entertaining at some point because it's always somebody that's gonna do something. It's either overly disrespectful and you have to talk about the shit, yeah. or just so hilariously funny. You like, damn, did you really do that? But. We don't get a chance to see it with everybody else because because you don't necessarily see that with Cubans because Cubans rarely get to fight each other for one, you know, but you don't see the all-out bro like, what? I was Guantanamo, bitch. This is Havana. Well, fuck you. You don't, you don't really get to I, see that. I, now, supposedly, the, the now, I don't know. We should have, we should brought Neeson on that. Is the... The brown versus black, as far as Cubans go. Oh yeah, I know there, there is that. There I, is that I, I, divide. I know, I know, but I know there's a difference between people who dislike the Castro part mentality no. to the, versus the people who like who dislike the Batiste uh, mentality. They they all in the same place. People like to ignore people. Most people historically only know Castro. They forget about Batiste before him, so they don't realize how this shit plays out over time. But that's the same thing, like. You don't necessarily see the Puerto Rican fighters. What? Sign one for life, son. Like, hey, you know uh, who was it? Uh, Trinidad. He he's not a Cotto fan. He was a Verdejo fan. He picked the wrong side, but still. Hey, <laughs> I get okay. You got. It. Well, it, we haven't seen it. Have you seen it with any Asian fighter yet? I'm sure there is, but they, we, we, we we can't. We don't see those fights. I'm sure in Japan there's. I'm sure there has to be, right? You would think there is. It's in every other culture. Yeah, yeah but we just can't. We don't. Even the UK, there's more of the guys from who are more uh, uh, considered to be from the street, and people right. be more 
uh, I guess it would be more private to public education type thing, you know, like, like speaking of that, like the, one of the weirdest, it was weird for me to hear this was when Tyson Fury was like, it's a racial thing. I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? And I got to remember, he is in the UK. There's a whole different mentality. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Joshua, you you mean the IBF? I get it. But it, it's, it, everybody has their, their MO and you're like, you're trying to figure it out. But in boxing, all you got to do is you got to pick. It's no real good or bad side. It's the side that you hate yeah. versus the side that you either love or are more biased to. Because we're all, if you don't like a certain person or, or a certain fighter or a certain, or a certain race, a certain ethnicity, a certain country, you're going to always be like, well, deep down, yeah. you know what? Fuck them motherfuckers. <laughs> Uh, but that's why I like it. That's why I, I stay off of mm-hmm. social media sometimes because everybody is so biased. It's like it's, it's, it's unrealistic with boxing. Mm-hmm. It's unrealistic Be- because if you talk about regular sports, it's normally team sports. People can accept that your team sucks or your team's, or your team's an underdog. Mm-hmm. In boxing, you just can't do it. Everybody has a fucking God complex. Mm-hmm. Oh, you sons of bitch. The call's rejected. The call's rejected. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's get into this fight now. Because um, I think initially, this is what I said going right after the fight, right after the first fight, was that I thought that it was really hard for me to see any way that Kovalev wins the second fight. Only because I don't know if Kovalev can knock out Ward. And it kind of seems like that it's almost what would have... It, that's almost what it will take for him to win a decision. Now, there are things that have happened since. One, the fact that any time a fighter starts talking about possibly retiring, they've got one foot out. That's we, We've said that with every fighter who has talked about it. They got one foot out. If they're already talking about it, they got there. They're halfway there. Ward has now talked about it. And, he, you know, um, it, it's like, and with the talking, you know, um, you know, well, oh, Ward's team's playing mind games and they're really not going to do that. But what Kovalev says is the God's honest truth. <laughs> And what, you know, Kovalev saying, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's pissed off, so he's going to come out, you know, and be be stupid and, and not and not uh, uh, fight smart and everything like that. It's like, they may, they both can maybe just be talking shit and wanting, you know, because I don't, maybe, maybe Kovalev will come out in that style. And if he's not, quote unquote, overtrained, maybe we will see more of what we saw in the first fight. On the other hand, if Ward did figure out what Kovalev was going to do, well, we may f- see more of a controlled style than what we saw in the second half. Uh, but I'm going to go against my first thoughts. My first thought was that Kovalev was going to lose this fight. I'm actually going to pick him to win this fight in a close decision. With It's possible he can score another knockdown. Um... The key for him is to not let go of the jab. Is to how he established the jab early is to keep on pumping that bitch the whole night. You know what I mean? That's really what's going to be key for him. Not accepting the clinch and as they break, is he going to meet Ward with a shot as he's leaving? You know, because Ward like to take the little tap to the body or get him with a quick hook as he's pulling back. Um, I just hope it's a it's a funner fight than the first one. The first fight. It was okay. It was more drama than actual action um, in the fact that Kovalev averaged uh, about 10 10 punches landed around and Ward averages about nine and a half punches around landed. It wasn't that, it wasn't that much action in it. I hope it's going to be a better fight. I'm, I think Kovalev's going to stick with the jab longer. I think he's going to box smarter. Uh, if he has, 
John David Jackson actually talking to him in the corner more, which for whatever reason he wasn't allowed to in the first in the first go around. I think that's going to be an advantage for him. Um, and if he hurts Ward, this is what I said about um, when he fought Jean Pascal. Remember, mm. and Pascal goes, "He's a racist." You better hope he's not a racist because if he is, he's going to kill you, Pascal. Because <laughs> Pascal, he would have killed if he. Um, but I think there's a genuine dislike. And I think actually for Kovalev, that's actually going to play into his advantage. Because truth be told, I think he really did respect Ward a lot going into the first fight. He had zero bad words for Ward going in the first fight. It was all about respect. So is he racially insensitive? Absolutely. Is he probably prejudiced? Yeah, probably. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call him racist because he's not. He, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's not really doing anything that's going to down, down anybody. Prejudice? Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. forgot about the Pascal thing. That's poor people. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much, yeah. 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 yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like for me, I always I always differentiate racist and prejudice. Like, like I don't think he's out there just beating up black people because he hates black people. He may be prejudiced against him and have preconceived notions about black people or whatever. That's, you know, that to me, those are two different things. Um but I actually think that the fact that he doesn't like Ward this time around, I think it's going to play into his his hand. I think he's going to actually try to punish him more, and I think that's going to help him. He's not – if he gasses, he's fucked because it's a close fight. They're going to edge it to Ward. Um, but I think he's going to do just enough. I'm going to say he's going to win seven rounds this time. Uh, he's going to win one, one, uh, 115, 113. But honestly, it could go the exact opposite way, and um, it's not a shock because this is still a 50-50 fight. I was about to say, first and foremost, it's still a 50-50 fight. <laughs> still. Uh, second, um, Angelo had to had to kind of sit me down with my remedial math skills. <laughs> let y'all know I totally fucked up what I was saying with the last fight, how I scored it as, as a draw. Uh, we're we're going to skip past that. I'm just admitting my flaws here. Uh, <laughs> this fight is, diff- is more difficult. Normally I say whoever loses... That's who has the advantage in the upcoming fight. Because of the excuse wars and how the the shit played out with both fighters, I don't expect to see neither fight style that came in the first fight. I expect Ward to be completely different, and I expect Kovalev to have a completely different uh, start. That being said, that makes it more of a 50-50 fight for me now. I look at it like this. Then, okay, Kovalev knows he can get him out of there. He knows I, if I can put him on the mat, if I'm smart and I don't bum rush him and 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 and, and uh, punch myself out, I actually I actually can probably get to him later. Because of not the early knockdown, it because it was because of the later stumble, like it was when he won one round ten. He's like, I still got enough to be able to hit him mm-hmm. late. So I'm like, okay. So if you're smart enough to, to and your corner smart enough to know, your your power can last if you actually use it. Was that the follow punch right. one? No, I think that was a jab too. That I'm saying, but remember the he, remember uh, when Ward wound up with the bolo punch. Oh, I forgot and about Cole the wider. Caught him. I forgot about the bolo punch. Yeah, that's what. It, that, that might be it because he did. He he stumbled on yeah, that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> then you got hold up, hold up. Because of that. He's gonna he had that creates a problem for him also. Because he knows I can outpower him. I gotta not punch myself out. But the problem he's gonna have is all this bullshit. Because now you talked all that shit, the crush is gonna be back. You know I'm here. Uh, are you going are you now you trying to I wanna end his career? That actually takes some energy, bro. So catch twenty two. Well, Ward is like, okay, you're, you're not the stronger fighter. We know that. Kovalev says you can't hurt him. I don't believe that either. Because Kovalev might have been down more times than Ward in his career. I don't know. It's close. It's close. But I think Ward has enough if he catches him with the right shot to put him down. But he's going to have to catch him with the right shot, you know. The problem with, with this with this scenario is, can you out, outbox him? Maybe, but but that would take you being able to be on the on the power end of these punches. Can you take that punishment? I don't think so. So 
is the infighting going to work for, for either fighter? No. Because what I remember from the first fight, it was Kovalev actually kicked off all the infighting because he wanted to muscle him in the beginning of the fight to let him know who's stronger. So all of the shit that happened later on when he got tired, that was your damn fault. Mm -hmm. So, and that played to his style at the particular time. Now with Ward, here's my edge. He's a winner. And he's perceived as a winner. So his comebacks look greater than a Kovalev comeback because Kovalev is perceived as a crusher. Mm -hmm. So this is the problem with the fucking judging. So, you, so to me, I'm like, dude, this is still a 50-50 fight. Now, I, I would take Ward on adjustments because he knows what he can't do. Kovalev knows he could do everything he want to do and still probably lose. So, I would be, if I'm cold enough, I'm thinking, I got I to gotta knock this motherfucker out. But the problem is, Ward makes too many adjustments. Because if you don't get him, or you don't beat him into a, a, submission, a point of submission where he's slow to the point where you, where you got more gas than he does, you might be still screwed. That being said, I'm completely contradicting this all by saying this is going to be a blowout on one side or the other. <laughs> Which side's blowing it out? That's why I'm fucked up. I, I'm taking Ward in the fight, but I'm but I'm a caveat and say this: I wouldn't be surprised if he get knocked out in three. I'd probably be surprised. I guess not, because I mean he was knocked out in the second round. He was actually hurt right away in the first round, right? Um, it's tough. Like. You know, like you were talking about perception wise, and this is the judges can come into play, and and everything else is like you know, Crusher is considered the Crusher. He's not considered a boxer yet. He boxed Ward, and where most people thought he actually won the fight, like, and that's how even the people who said Ward won, it was really close. So in a straight boxing match, it was really that close. Uh, uh, you know, he doesn't get credit for his skill. Um, and he's, you know, he's got a legitimate amateur background, not to the level of where Ward got to. Um, so there can be adjustments on his side. Um, here, here's one, one other thing I was gonna say. You know how Ward is kind of, you know how he did with the the face off, dissing mm -hmm. the face off, and not doing it. And you know, sometimes that ends up instead of being two house fighters for HBO ends up being one house fighter for HBO like shit like that can take place where there's been so much talk about the decision being bad that it could actually go the exact opposite way right. it's possible man and if that's the case and Ward wins the fight but Kovalev gets the decision trust me you're going to hear me saying no no Ward won that fight Kovalev got a gift decision now for all the people who said after the first fight, hey, the judges saw it that way. Yeah, you got to live with that argument as well. Because I don't live with that argument ever. See, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, Kovalev wins. If he if he hypothetically wins a decision, everybody's like, ah, Ward won the fight. This is going to be a problem for him. Because now, if he gets a quote-unquote gift, does he just stop now? He said, no, but I won, fuck it. Like with all the shit you talk and all this, you gonna have to you gonna have to go for number three. Now on a, on the flip side, if he loses another close decision, what does, what do you say then? I'm the white Vernon Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! That was pretty quick too. I didn't have time to think about that. <laughs> but, like th th this fight. For fans, you better hope. For fans' sake, you will hope for a Kovalev win. But both of these boxers have bad intentions. They do. So, they, so that's why I said it's going to be a blowout. Whoever gets ahead first, it's over. It's over. It's no... Because there's, 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 Kovalev, if he, gets, if he gets the hurt ward... He's going to um, progress. He's going to walk him down to try to kill him. He's not going to rush in there. 
So he gonna make sure he is done and done properly. Mm-hmm. If Ward comes out and wins two out of the first three rounds, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a fucking landslide at that particular point because he's gonna force Kovalev to try to punch himself out mm-hmm. because this is about embarrassment. This is this fight is imagine in my mind. Um, Leonard Duran. Imagine the the Duran that wanted to embarrass and beat the brakes off of Leonard that did it in one. Fighting the Leonard that wanted revenge in two. These is both fighters coming together in this. So if if you could hypothetically put those two fighters t- together that same night, you know somebody is going to get caught on the end of a bad one. You know, it, even if both fighters are tremendous fighters and have tremendous heart, whoever's just more on that night, that's who wins. That's absolutely who wins. That's why I say it's a 50-50 fight. You just, um, man, but the one of the only reasons I will go for water is just because of comfort. Not, not just comfort and comfort in people's perception of him even though that means some some judges might want to stick it to him comfort in his team because he didn't have all the 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 the, the shit going on in the background mm-hmm. like with, with kovalev in fighting with the team i need a new and it wasn't just the john david jackson mm-hmm. part it was getting rid of the condition the oh, guy yeah. you know like that shit should have been kept quiet honestly but I'm going to be tuned in eating a lot of fucking popcorn for this one. Because last year I said that was one of the best fights of the year. Because the two actual top dogs actually showed up to fight and they gave heart in that fight. Mm-hmm. So this fight, this ain't about heart. This is about dismantling somebody. Yeah. Um, so there you go. One for Ward, one for Kovalev. Battle of the beer! Yeah. <laughs> um, also... Uh, Guillermo uh, Rigondeau on the undercard versus Moises Flores. Uh, hopefully he doesn't put everybody to sleep. I don't know if I'll watch that one. Dimitri Bivol versus Cedric Agnew. Bivol should go right through him. Uh, Agnew, I think, just... The only thing I remember about Agnew is his parents, right? Wasn't his his parents one in the church clothes when he fought Kovalev? Wasn't that him? Man. I think it was, right? <laughs> uh, it's it's an okay call, Oh, man. shit. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, I know he. No, we wearing them damn clothes this night. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's about it, JP. You got, you got anything else on the, on the fight? That's it. Huh? We pretty much broke it down how it was. We we even broke down all the racial barriers. Man, we're doing we're doing God's work. God. <laughs> well, I was about to, oh, I was about to start speaking Arabic too. People, <laughs> what the fuck are you? You fucking. Oh, no, I just. Um, this, this is where the fighters fighting the fans come. I'm gonna just leave it. <laughs> well, let me go through my spill real quick, real, real quick. I, I, I gotta do my spill, man. I got this is this is what I do. Follow the show on Twitter at Cheap Seats Box, iTunes, rate, review. You will be the next unofficial sponsor. People, uh, just keep on doing what you're doing with the retweets. If you see the link for the iTunes or the YouTube link for the show, just keep on retweeting it. If you follow us on Twitter, please do that. It helped out last week. It really got thrown around, and I could see people clicking on the uh, on the link. So I really appreciate that. Um, email us cheapseatsboxing at gmail.com if, uh, if there's anything else you want to say. Over 140 characters now, JP. You want to say it again? Um. This is where we're going to talk a lot of shit about this fight next week. That's where it's, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I think we know what you meant. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we do everything like you guys from the cheap seats. Because we ain't buying no tickets, goddammit. Peace. Call me crazy, but no one can fake me. I'm the product of the projects. Lost and crazy. Throw your hands up. It's the Bruno. Rob. Big Mike Tyson about to brutalize that ass tonight. No hesitation. One of the whole nation. I'll be there. That's so bad. I'll probably violate. Information. It's